Just a little worked example about how to handle a projectile that's launched at an angle. And so the prompt here is that a ball is launched at 20 meter per second at a 35 degree angle from horizontal from five meters above the ground. And we're going to figure out where the projectile is going to land. So it's usually helpful to start with some kind of picture like we've got going here. And let's try to figure out where this thing's going to land. So the ball is launched at 20 meters per second. So here is its initial velocity vector, and we've got it tilted up at 35 degrees above the horizontal here. The next thing that's a good idea is to choose positive directions. And so in this particular problem, I'm going to choose the positive directions being to the right and up. You don't have to choose them this way, but I'm going to work the problem with that sign convention. Well, here's really the key is you want to divide things up into sort of vertical stuff, keep track of the vertical motion, and keep track of the horizontal motion completely separately. This is really key. This is the most important point about handling projectile motion. And so what we want to do, if we want to look at sort of vertical stuff and horizontal stuff, is you notice that this initial velocity um, has both a vertical component and a horizontal component. Um, so to get the vertical component here, it's 20 times sine of 35. You could go back to SOKOTOA to do that, um, but if you're going to be a student of physics or an engineer, you're going to eventually want to come to think of the sine as a function that sort of projects a vector uh, onto the side opposite the known angle. So it kind of finds the shadow of this blue vector um, onto, like, say, a vertical wall. And then likewise, cosine takes the shadow of the vector um, down onto the adjacent side, or in this case, which would be like um, onto the horizontal. And so if we look at our vertical motion, um, we will use this kinematic equation, delta y is 1 half at squared plus v initial t, and then plug in appropriate values. So let's do it. Well, so I'm putting in delta y is negative 5. Now, why is that? That's because the projectile starts um, up here where it's launched out of the cannon, which is 5 meters above the ground. And the reason I put negative 5 is my positive direction is up and the ground is then 5 meters below. Um, so my change in position is, well, it's going to lose 5 meters of height. So my delta y is negative 5. My acceleration is also downward, so it is negative. That is the reason that the negative sign is there. Um, if I had chosen positive down, then I would put positive 9.8 in here, but I didn't. I chose positive up, so the acceleration is negative 9.8. And then my initial y velocity is 20 sine 35 or 11.47, and it is positive because it points up, and I chose positive to be up. So we basically have a quadratic equation brewing here. Um, just to make it pretty, I kind of herded everything over onto the left-hand side. So 1 half times negative 9.8 would be negative 4.9, but then if you kick it over to the left, it'll be positive 4.9. Um, and if you kick this 11.47t also to the left, you'll get this quadratic. Um, and so if you solve that with either graphing it or quadratic formula, you'll find these two times of either negative 3.38 seconds, which would be like in the past, um, if it had kind of followed this arc without the cannon back to the ground. Um, or you can project out into the future and find that uh, uh, 2.72 seconds will be the time um, when it gets to a height of, say, negative 5. So this is our relevant time, this 2.72 seconds. So now let's look at the horizontal stuff. Um, same kinematic equation, but now we'll be talking about uh, x instead of, um, instead of y. We're talking about only horizontal stuff. The key here is horizontally, the acceleration is zero if we're not accounting for air drag, which we won't in this particular problem. And so I'm going to plug in zero for A. So this whole entire first term is zero. And our V initial then is going to be this horizontal initial velocity of 16.38. And then we'll multiply by the time that the ball was in the air. And what you find when you do that is this delta x quantity is 44.6 meters. And so what that means is the ball travels 44.6 meters horizontally from where it was launched. Um, kind of recapping, the key really is to separate the vertical motion from the horizontal motion and make sure you're really careful about following your own sign convention that you chose. 
Um, for example, if I had chosen positive down, then my delta y would be positive 5 because it all goes down. My acceleration would be positive 9.8 since acceleration is down. And my V initial, in that case, if I chose positive down, would be negative 11.47. So that would still be correct. It's just a different way to solve the problem. So hopefully you find that helpful, and thanks for watching.